If you don't grow your inventory when you're a property manager, you're not going to go very far in this business. So today's guest is someone who is going to teach you exactly how to grow that inventory. This is the Vacation Rental Success Podcast, keeping you up to date with news, views, information and resources on this rapidly changing short-term rental business. I'm your host, Heather Bayer, and with 25 years of experience in this industry, I'm making sure you know what's hot, what's not, what's new and what will help make your business a success. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Success Podcast. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you again. Thank you for joining me. So as we go into the busy, busy part of the year, you know, it's a busy part of our year as a property management company and we're doing a ton of bookings and some of our properties are already fully booked for the summer. Some have been fully booked since way back in October, November last year with repeat guests. We are fortunate that we do have a big repeat market and providing that we continue to nurture that market, it's going to continue to grow. One of the ways that we we do nurture this market is everything that comes into us from the OTAs. We follow up after their stay. We've got their email address by then. By hook or by crook, we've got their email address. And that's a topic of another podcast, how we actually get those email addresses. But once we have them, then we start to email them after their stay. Often we don't get the email addresses till they are staying. And the other thing is that we don't want to bother them during their stay or before their stay to let them know that they paid rather too much for their vacation and they should have booked direct instead. No, we wait until afterwards and we contact them and we ask them if they had a great time and what you know, what can we do to improve the property and how did they like our service, et cetera, et cetera. And then we drop it that, hey, did you know that if you booked through us directly next time, we're not going to say last time, if you booked directly, you would have saved XXX amount. But no, now you know us, now you have some trust in us as a company because we've seen you through the entire process of sending you information and welcoming you to the property and keeping you informed all the way. Now you can trust us with your hard earned money for your next vacation. And we are going to save you money when you do that. So that means we get a lot of repeat business that have come to us via Airbnb or Expedia or VRBO. Sorry, Verbo. I should know that by now. They came that way last year. This year, they are booking direct. And little by little, our book direct figures are going up, which is absolutely amazing. We love it. But it does take a lot of work. However, these properties are booking up and now we're finding, oh, we've, we're getting inquiries for properties for people who want this style of property or the, the amount of bedrooms or the type of waterfront and our inventory is getting low. We're not able to service the clients that are coming to us. So we are on a mega owner acquisition campaign. We need to bring in new owners to the company and... That's just not only us, all our competition is out there doing exactly the same thing. Everybody wants to get the owners. They, we want the quality properties and the great owners that are out there. There's a lot of owners, maybe you're one of them, who are sick and tired of doing this yourself with Airbnb and dealing with Verbo and payment plans processing and all the other stuff that comes with it. So we are getting quite a lot of owners now who have been through the do-it-yourself process and are now coming to us because they understand we, we offer a terrific service. Yes, they pay a commission, but in general, we're able to boost the prices a little to offset some of that extra cost. We work with our owners in any way to make it more palatable and easier to join us and become part of our CLRM family. We love our owners. But the acquisition process has always not necessarily been a challenge because we get a lot of organic traffic coming directly to us. People find us, lots of referrals, but we need to make a big effort this year. We've got a big push to get 30 to 40 new properties 
over the next six months. And, and that's going to take some work. So I was blown away when I went to VRMA last October and I saw the owner of Vintori, and that is Brooke Fouts, talking about going from naught to 500 properties and how he did it in his ocean city company way back in, well, not necessarily way back. No, Brooke, it wasn't that way back. But uh, back in, uh, you know, 2007, I believe it was, it was around recession time. And he has since gone on to create a company that is solely focused on owner acquisition. So I'm not going to say any more now. I, I, I think what Brooke says speaks for itself. So without further ado, let's just move straight on over to my conversation with Brooke Fouts of Vintory. Great to have with me today, Brooke Fouts from Vintory. And now is it Vintory or Vintory.com? Vintory. Vintory. Okay. Sort of a little mix in between. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining me, Brooke. It's an absolute pleasure. I caught your session at the VRMA conference in, uh, where was it? Where were we this year? New Orleans. New Orleans. Yes. yes. I caught your session at the VRMA conference in New Orleans. And I've never been to a session before where halfway through they had to roll back the doors to <laughs> let the room next door in. And when they rolled back the doors, there were about 30 or 40 people, maybe more, already sitting in there. It was, it was phenomenal. Your topic, which you're going to talk about in a moment, was obviously a huge draw for the audience. So thanks for joining me today to talk about this. Well, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here and uh, thank you for everything you do for our, our industry. Oh, I love it. I mean, we, we're not, we wouldn't do this if we weren't passionate about it, surely. Yeah. So, exactly. so we're going to talk about how to grow inventory in a short-term rental business because yeah. that is what you help property managers do. And it's, it's a topic that's really dear to my heart. I run a property management company. We sit at around about 160 properties. We are trying, I mean, for the last couple of years, we've been trying to grow to 200. And we really don't want to go much beyond that. It, you know, we've, we've sort of set that ceiling at 200. But, you know, we grow a bit and then we fall back a bit and then we grow a little bit more and we fall back a bit. And I think this is something that, uh, that perhaps we can, we can talk about as churn. But let's start off with you telling me how you actually got into the business in the first place and why you've chosen inventory growth as your focus. Yeah, well, it's, um, you know, like most people uh, in this industry, I just kind of stumbled into it. Believe it or not, I was actually in, was in mortgage banking prior to vacation rentals and built up a, a pretty large company uh, right out of college um, after about eight years. Um, unfortunately, uh, the mortgage meltdown happened in 2006, 2007, and I was in a group called YPO, Young Presidents Organization, and there was a gentleman in my group. I mean, Brad Callahan, really super sharp guy. I respect the heck out of. And he said, hey, Brooke, I'm reading the same headlines you're reading. You know, the mortgage industry isn't getting any better. Why don't you come over here and help me start this uh, vacation rental company in Ocean City, Maryland? And I said, Brad, you, you realize I don't know anything about vacation rentals and I don't even live in Ocean City, right? And he said, well, Brooke, you're an entrepreneur. You'll, you'll figure it out. And that was, the, that was the beginning of it. And when was that? That was in 2007. 2007. So that was around about the time we're hearing, getting the start of Airbnb, really taking hold. HomeAway is, is in major acquisition mode. And what, what was it like back then for you? Yeah, so it was, uh, it was, you know, challenging getting started, you know, when you have zero properties and you're going to owners and saying, hey, sign up with me, trust me, you know, it gets a little challenging. But, you know, before you know it, you had one and then you had two and then it kind of, uh, you know, grew exponentially from there. But, you know, it was... I would actually say starting a business in the recession, you know, if you think about it, we were right in the middle of 2007, mm -hmm. 2008. It actually, I think, helped us um, because we were actually signing up owners that had never signed up before in a rental program. So these were first timers, right? And they were forced to do this based on the economy. And uh, therefore, it was actually able to accelerate a little bit of our, uh, our growth just because we, you know, we were in that recession. Yeah, so it was, uh, it was an interesting time. Uh, it was, I actually... You know, it actually helped with having, you know, VRBO and HomeAway uh, because, you know, if I looked at my competitors, you know, so the, the office right next to us, they had 4,000 properties under management. And when I say <laughs> next door, I mean, like, you know, we were suite B and they were suite A. And, you know, I could never compete against them because, you know, as far as guest 
came, you know, because they had, you know, 40 years of repeats and referrals. And, you know, here I am starting up a new business and we tried everything. And, you know, lo and behold, you know, here comes uh, Homeway and we would list our, you know, our properties on there. And I know it, it actually allowed us to kind of accelerate the, you know, the, the bookings um, by having them where if it was only just a few years earlier, we would have probably struggled a little bit harder. So I know some people think, you know, don't look so kindly onto uh, some of the OTAs, but they, they actually helped me accelerate our growth uh, from the beginning. Yeah, I think uh, I think this is uh, this is very true. Still stands true today. So so tell me, you know, how did you? <laughs> you're in that environment. You're in your office. You've got the big company next door. How do you go about persuading new owners that it's you they should come with and not the more established company? Well, so that, that kind of comes back to, you know, all right, you, you have to do something different, right? And you can't do the exact same thing that everybody else is doing. So we went in from the beginning as trying to be a more luxury brand, right? Um, and, you know, rather than just being a, you know, kind of handing out your keys and, you know, here you go, get the heck out. You know, we said, look, well, you know, I actually had an epiphany, Heather, where there was a, there was a Hilton just built a brand new direct oceanfront hotel in Ocean City at the time. And a one bedroom suite back at the time that those days was going for about, I think it was like $3,200 a week. And meanwhile, our really nice one bedroom suites were going for about, you know, 1500 or, mm -hmm. you know, 1700 a week. And I was like, what's the difference here? Where is that Delta coming from? And well, it comes down to the brand, right? It's, you know, you're, you're getting an established brand. You're getting these, you know, these differences. You're getting all those extras in a hotel. So I said, look, let me, and this is not new, right? You know, let me take what this Hilton was doing and let me take all those features and benefits and bring them into, you know, our business model. Things like, a, you know, we had a USA Today sitting on everybody's doorstep every morning. You know, we, um, we had a free concierge. We would uh, partner with a local gym. We do free gym membership. So we tried to do these things that would help, uh, you know, from the guest perspective, you know, to get a higher ADR. But what ended up actually happening was the owners really enjoyed this and they felt that they would get a better, you know, clientele because we brought all these features and it made us stand out versus, you know, all the competitors. How did you get the first one though? How, <laughs> how did you get the, you know, that very first one to say, yeah, I'm going to trust you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, uh, I think it was just dumb luck. I think they, uh, they, maybe they didn't ask us how many we had, <laughs> you know, so I, 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 yeah, I don't know how, why he took that leap of faith with us, but it, it, uh, it didn't work. And, and how many did you have to grow to before it became easier to say, this is our brand and this is you know, why you can trust us because we have a, a strong brand? Yeah, I mean, I think it, once we got to about 30 to 50 properties, then we knew we had something for real here. Uh, we got into, you know, I, I learned early on that I wanted to specialize. So rather than just scattering all throughout Ocean City. So Ocean City is like roughly a, you know, a 10 mile piece of sand with about 20,000 condos on it. And rather than just going everywhere, I said, you know what, I'm gonna strategically, almost like a sniper-like approach, I'm gonna go after very specific buildings and communities. And I wanna really just own those buildings and get market share uh, in those. And these were, you know, higher end properties, these were higher ADR properties, and therefore, you know, we would, we would specialize that. And, and we, ended up doing some, we ended up doing some very specific marketing for those buildings, whether it be building out microsites for them, uh, whether it be, you know, our marketing efforts when we would send a postcard, you know, owner acquisition postcard to those buildings, it would actually have a picture of that building rather than just a generic picture. So the more personalized we could really helped. Yeah, excellent. So were you competing on um, commission with your competitors? I mean, yes. I mean, but we didn't play that game. I didn't want to, I really didn't want it to be based around commission. <laughs> I didn't want to race to the bottom. I, I wanted to focus more on, look, what are the features that we're offering? What are the benefits to you? If we can get additional marketing and you can make additional dollars, if we can bring in a higher type, you know, class of guests potentially and all these different things, that's what I really tried to turn the focus on. The last thing I wanted to do is mm -hmm. uh, race to the bottom on, on commissions. Yes, that's, uh, and, 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 you know, it's an issue we're all facing at the moment with the consolidators coming in and, and offering just crazy commission rates. So, so let's, let's move forward then. What, yeah. what, what happened to get you into saying, well, you know, I want to specialize in this specific area of owner acquisition and building inventory? Yeah. So, I mean, when, so when I was at Vantage, you know, we, we ended up getting a lot of momentum and we actually grew it pretty uh, fairly quickly. And uh, did that for about five years. 
And uh, I realized uh, that I, I really enjoyed the owner acquisition piece. I really enjoyed the marketing piece, the growth piece. And I think I'm a self-aware person and I, I recognize that I'm not necessarily a great COO or operator or GM, you know, managing a, a team of maintenance people. And, and by this time, Heather, we had over 500 properties. Mm-hmm. Guys, we grew pretty quickly and, and um, you know, managing a team of housekeepers and managing a team of uh, maintenance people and, and dealing with, look, wall averages, you're going to have some irate guests when you have that many checkouts on a weekly basis. So it, it took its toll and uh, had an opportunity to be a chief business development officer for a large company down in Orlando where I didn't have to deal with anything except for, you know, owner acquisition and, you know, building out and uh, scaling that business. So sold Vantage in 2013, went down to Orlando. Did that for about another five years, and then um, actually ended up getting into software. I actually worked for uh, for LiveRes for two years as the vice president of sales and marketing there. And around this time, Heather, I recognized that you know whenever you'd go to a conference, what what is always the most widely held sessions, right? It's always the sessions that revolve around owner acquisition. And you know when I would uh, I would actually facilitate these mastermind groups with LiveRes, and obviously would meet tons and tons of different vacational managers. And one of the biggest challenges is they always had was how do they grow their inventory or, or that Vicasa is coming in and all these big multi, you know, uh, state conglomerates are coming in and just, you know, taking their inventory and um, they need to progressively, you know, go and attack against that. Um, I mean, if you look at the, the business development department for just Vicasa alone, I think there's something like 150 people in it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's more than most vacational managers, entire companies, you know, yeah. and that's all they're doing is going after there. And they have, you know, full-time copy people, brand people, full-time, you know, digital marketing specialists, all these things. So it's really difficult and challenging. So I said, you know what, like, this is what I, I, I really enjoy. I really enjoy this part of the business. It, it's something I've been blessed to be pretty good at. And uh, there's a need for it. And, you know, it's, you know, business 101, solve a business problem. And that's how I kind of jumped into it. And, uh, Heather, it's, uh, the response has been fantastic. It's just only, you know, confirmed everything that I thought. And uh, we're, we're signing up companies left and right. We have a dialed in system right now that we've deployed over 30 times. And it just, it works if you just follow the plan. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to try and elicit a little bit more, a little bit of this plan out of you. <laughs> Let's do it. How much time do you have? Eh? We, we can be here all day. Remember, this took 12 years to build. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's say you've got a, a new property manager get, just getting started. You know, we just talked about how you were with, you know, how you started with Vantage way back in 2007. Would you be telling them to do the same when they start building inventory? Just find a niche and, and do something different? Well, I'm a big, that's a great, great uh, comment there. I mean, I'm a big believer in riches and niches, right? Find your niche and just, you know, absolutely run with that and specialize in something. Don't do everything that everybody else is doing. Um, But from a, you know, if I were talking, if somebody came to me, a new company and they wanted a quick start, you know, all right, what do I, there's, there's two sets. It's kind of like SEO, right? It's like SEO and pay-per-click. You know, SEO is hard. It takes a long time, but it works. Over time, it works and it works consistently well. If you build out the content, you build out, you know, all the, the assets and everything you need to, to, to build up that brand, but it takes time. It's not a quick fix. So, you know, owner acquisition is similar to that. Um, you can do some quick things like pay-per-click where here you would be, I would say the quick things on owner acquisition would be direct mail. That's kind of the, you know, uh, it's, this is one of the few industries where direct mail still works. It's getting more and more expensive, but it is, the ROI is definitely there in, in many markets. But, you know, I would, from a short, you know, immediate fix, I would say direct mail is probably the, uh, the best start. Uh, but from a long-term strategy, it's, uh, it's a little bit more in depth, if you will. Okay, well, let's, let's, let's go for the short term. Let's talk about direct mail. You know, it's not it's something that we've never done in our business because we, we, we cover such a wide area. And it's really, you know, we, we, we've got 250,000 lakes in Ontario. Wow. <laughs> I mean, that's across Ontario, but certainly, you know, in our in our small area, probably sixty, seventy thousand lakes, hmm. each of which have hundreds and hundreds of cottages around them, and out of those, a percentage are going to want to rent out. Um, so, actually, finding those owners 
You know, it would be very lovely to have a boat and just go <laughs> round to all the docks and then just throw <laughs> off a nice little information. That would be our direct I, mail. I like that. I, <laughs> yes. love, I think that's a good plan. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, so it's, it's not something we've done. So it's not something I'm familiar with. How, how do you go about that? Yeah, so it all starts with data, right? You know, and, and step one is getting the right list. And um, and I'm, I'll be candid, I'm not very familiar with Canada as far as the laws, as far as obtaining a direct mail list. But in the U.S., it's fairly easy. You, uh, you just go out and there's many different list brokers out there you can buy data from. There's, you know, there's Melissa data, there's exact data, there's, I mean, thousands and thousands of different list brokers out there you can buy data from. And really what you're looking for is absentee owners. So this is where the mailing address and the uh, property address are, are different. That's usually hmm. an indicator of a, an investor. So start start there. That's you know step one. We go a little bit further. Um, so what we, what we try to do is we try to overlay any additional information we can find. So if we can, uh, in certain markets, you can get uh, vacation rental permit data. So we'll we we'll get as long as we're allowed to uh, by law. We'll get that data. We'll overlay that, merge the lists, mm -hmm. and then merge them all together. And you can sometimes even go a little bit uh, one step further. Sometimes you can even do some OTA scrape. You can uh, get some OTA scrape data where you're overlaying that on top of it. So you have a really good starting point from your list and knowing who you're going after. Now again, there's also some states where uh, real estate you have that real estate licensing where you can't do specific targeting. Uh, so obviously we don't do that, but in the states that uh, don't regulate that, we then really make up a really uh, refined list and we, we bucket them by personas. So the personas would be, you know, RBO Ruby or first time Frank or competitor Carla. And you can even, you know, get the, the personas and you can even break them down based on which company they're with. You know, maybe they're different pain points with uh, a large multi-destination management company, maybe different than a small local company. And what you do is you kind of change your, you can change your messaging based on those pain points of those personas. So all starts with data, all starts with personas, and that's the kind of the foundation of, of where you would start. And then you can get into the actual, the printing and the messaging of the, uh, the postcard or direct mail piece that can, you know, a letter can be uh, various different things. But we like to segment our list out. Uh, we, we kind of just do more of an A, B, C targets typically. You know, A's we like to drip on almost a monthly basis. These are going to be your best, absolute, top, perfect type of properties. It's going to be a very uh, small select uh, group. You're going to hit them on a monthly basis. Bs, we usually recommend hitting on a quarterly basis. And then Cs, you might hit once or twice a year. But a lot of this obviously depends on the, the list size and also talks uh, um, depends on the budget of the, the property manager that we're dealing with. But as far as designing the, the letter and the messaging, the more per let's just talk about postcard, for example. The more personalized you can get, uh, the better. Personalization is key, you know. And so, if you there are different print houses out there, um, you know, there's some that you can get where you get it's called digital dynamic printing, where you can actually change the print on every single postcard. So you can merge mm -hmm. in your name on the letter. You can actually, if you're targeting by uh, buildings, um, let's say in a condo type market, you can actually like we did, we would merge in the pictures of the building. So when I'm sending to Meridian, it has a picture of the Meridian building. I'm sending to Sunset Island, it has a picture of Sunset Island uh, on there. So um, there's many things, uh, like, you know, that personalization that you can do. Um, and then, you know, we, we, you know, there's a whole entire format and I'd be glad to share with you uh, and, you know, maybe you can uh, post afterwards, but um, just a format of a proper uh, postcard, you know, all the things you're looking for, it calls to action, messaging, risk reversals, social proof, you know, kind of the standard elements that should be included in every single postcard. Oh, I'd love that. If you could, uh, you know, share that and we could share that with listeners and I'll have that put um, as a link on the show notes. That would be great. Happy to, yeah. Um, yeah, this is, this is really interesting. I'm so glad you mentioned personas. It's something that I talk about all the time. You know, specifically, we talk about it with our staff about having our different guest personas, but but certainly our, our owners, because we do, you know, once we've got our owners into our company, we don't treat them all the same. We've right. got investor owners, we've got the families, and we've got the, the we've got a, a, a little small group of owners that absolutely love to be involved. <laughs> so, you know, we actually have, we have a focus group. So we ask them, you know, how we can do better as a company. And, and that is our, that, that those are our involved owners. And the investors will get far more detailed financial statements 
than perhaps the families who really yeah. just want the check to come through every month. So, so we certainly do that. But when we're trying to do this a little bit more now in, in our owner acquisition process. So what are the key elements? I mean, we've talked about one specific thing. What, would, what are the key elements to an actual owner acquisition strategy? Sort of what are all the, the different components that go to make one successful? Yeah. So, you know, we've developed over the last, you know, real 12 years, and this has evolved uh, as we've gone, but we've, we've developed a, a property acquisition system and it's a, it's a nine step uh, phase uh, and each you know each phase of that uh, that program that system uh, has a lot of moving parts and things like that. But I'm I'm glad to go over you know, go over each of these with you if you want. Sure. All right. So it, all, it starts with and I'll try to be brief because I know we only have a limited amount of time here. So uh, it's, it starts with the the strategy, right? The the goals. You know where do you want to go? So first off is establishing like you talked about. You you wanted to get to 200 properties, right? So establishing what that goal looks like. Um, so how many, where are you currently, how many do you need to get and what are you going to churn or what are you going to lose in a year? So that gives you your kind of your target number where you need to go. Um, and then it's like, okay, wh- which, which type of properties are we looking for? Like in your example, we only want, let's just say we only want waterfront properties. Obviously that narrows down our, you know, narrows down our focus. Okay. We only want three bedrooms or higher, you know, so you're really just kind of setting up that, you know, where you want to go, what's the goal and then how you're going to get there. So that's uh, step one. Step two is the right team. You know, as, as Jim Collins says, it's getting the right people on the bus and then getting them in the right seats. And uh, we, I strongly, strongly believe in uh, psychometric personality profiling. Uh, there's a couple out there. Uh, one is called Culture Index and another one is called Predictive Index. Um, there's a, a, a gentleman in the industry, uh, Steve Trover, that is doing that uh, with Predictive Index. And it is, you know, having that, if you have the ability to get a person on your team that you can identify that has the right profile for sales, it definitely uh, makes your life uh, much mm-hmm. easier. Um, so I'm a big, uh, big believer in um, those uh, psychometric uh, testing. Um, up next, step three would be the competitive messaging. So really flushing out your unique selling propositions, right? Your USPs. What sets you apart? Why is your company different than everybody else out there? You know, so often, you know, you know, these, uh, these vacation home managers have such a great program. They have such a great team. They have, they do things really, really well. And I, I'm, I do this all the time. I mean, I'm traveling every single week to multiple destinations and, and really trying to flush out, uh, flush this out, but they're not communicating that, right? They're not communicating that to, uh, to the public. So what we'll do is we, we flush out what are their USPs, what are their key features and benefits? What are some risk reversals that they can implement? to help eliminate any friction during the buying process, right? So no, you know, like a good example would be like no startup fees, no long-term contracts. You know, uh, those are good risk, risk reversals that can help, again, eliminate any kind of friction when you, you have somebody potentially looking to uh, sign up. Um, and then social proof, right? So social proof can you know, take many forms. It can be references. It can be quotes from owners. Uh, and again, you want to personalize as much as possible. It could also be what we call trust icons. So a good example of trust icons would be Better Business Bureau A plus rating, uh, Airbnb Superhost. You know those kind of and featured in different magazines or newspapers. Mm-hmm. You know that uh, resonate well with the uh, the target that you're going after. So those are great social proof. Uh, that's that so, that one certainly works for us. Yes, <laughs> you've got some good. <laughs> some good, some good, some good ones send, out there, that's for sure. Yeah, we, we we just send out a note to say you know. If, if you're interested, you know, you're obviously looking forward to renting out your property. So listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> up next would be technology. So leverage technology to help, uh, you know, grow your and scale your, your business. And um, we're, you know, big, big believers in CRMs. And there's multiple other different types of technology out there. We use call tracking services. We use uh, HubSpot for our CRM. I can't uh, recommend HubSpot, you know, enough. Um, and it integrates with everything, and at least you're tracking, you know, those leads. So we set up HubSpot. We also connect with, like I said, uh, a call tracking service. So every single uh, marketing campaign that we have will actually have a unique phone number to it. Um, we can track those calls. We can record those calls. We can do A/B testing uh, on the on the campaigns just to see what's uh, working, you know, best. And we have a bunch of other different uh, solutions that we use. Um, but those are just kind of a couple. Uh, yeah, if I could just um, ask you a little bit more about HubSpot, because you mentioned that in um, in the session at the conference. 
And and you said it, there was a free option there. Is that still the case? Yeah. So it's uh, HubSpot. Their CRM is free forever. Um, unlimited uh, users, unlimited, uh, I think up to a million leads uh, you can get. Now, it's be careful because you'll like it and there's lots of other upgrade opportunities, right? There's different areas that you can upgrade to, whether it's their marketing platform, whether it's their service platform, sales starter, uh, everything else. But the CRM itself, mm -hmm. the core CRM is free forever. Okay, well, that's useful to know. I'll make sure that I've got uh, links to the things that you're mentioning on the show notes. Great. Okay, next. Next. Um, well, we talked about data before uh, and, and personas, so getting a good list and uh, segmenting out those personas. Um, and then here's kind of the big one, right? It's, you know, successful marketing strategies. So these marketing strategies can be, you know, the traditional, you know, direct mail and postcards, or it can be more of an inbound. Um, I know you're a big believer in inbound marketing uh, through education, through content. In my opinion, that's the way everything is going. Everything is going to more of an inbound approach um, rather than, you know, screaming out at everybody and messaging that they probably don't want to hear you know, building out really good content that people are searching for at the right time. And over the long term, it's kind of like the way I look at it, it's, it's it goes back to my metaphor about SEO and pay-per-click, right? It's, uh, it's, it's going to take a little bit longer to do it, but uh, it'll be less expensive in the end and it'll be much more successful. But, you know, building out that, that inbound uh, marketing strategy, uh, I think is probably the, uh, the, the most effective thing you can do. And, just to, just to kind of give a couple examples of things that um, would potentially be helpful, I think, on those. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I always like to think with the end in mind. Like, you know, think of like lots of calls that you may be getting and answer those questions, right? If, you, so if you're getting calls, like I was funny, I was meeting with a partner of ours and, and uh, he was complaining about constantly getting all these calls from people, you know, as he said, kicking tires, you know, wanted to buy a house and uh, buy a vacation home and asking for numbers and, you know, very few of them, you know, convert, you know, and I said, well, what if we created a map, right? That actually had, uh, you know, performers like you, like once a month, you go through all the homes that are on the market in your area, in your market. And what if you created a performer for the top 20 homes that are on the market? And then we could create these beautiful performers and we could upload them onto this map. And here's a little tech tip for your, your listeners. Uh, Batch Geo is a great, great uh, solution where you can map anything you need to, and uh, it's not that expensive, uh, and allows you to, you know, create really cool interactive maps that you can put on your website. So now, you have all these, you know, potential uh, buyers are calling you, and rather than, you know, just rolling your eyes and moaning and groaning that they're calling you, actually leverage that and, and provide value and provide them what they're looking for. So perfect, uh, perfect example of something that you can do. Uh, through interactive content. And I know we, uh, speaking of interactive, uh, interactive content, you know, you and I have a mutual friend, uh, David Angotti, uh, at SmokyMountains.com. I mean, they built uh, their, I don't know if you've seen it, Heather, but their, their fall foliage. Uh, yes. Map. Oh, yes. And <laughs> that thing, I think it's generated since its inception over 10 million unique visitors. Mm -hmm. So, and it's gotten over 4 million unique visitors this year alone. So this is a perfect example of building you know, this interactive content that drives people to their website, right? And that's what they're looking for. So, you know, there's there's a really great, um, if you wanted to build any kind of online calculators, there's a great resource called, I think it's called Calconic, C-A-L-C-O-N-I-C. I'll, I'll get, give you the, uh, uh, the URL and you can post that afterward. Mm -hmm. But you can build interactive online calculators. So how about a situation where, you know, where and we do this for some of our partners, uh, where you actually pulled out an online calculator to show how the property will perform. You know, you put in the average daily rate, you put in the occupancy, you can even get as detailed as putting expenses. It'll show you how much it'll cost you or how much you'll make at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But again, build the resources of what people are looking for. So you're building that content where people are coming to you and um, you're seen as an expert in your field. Yeah, that's perfect. What about websites, Brooke? It's always frustrated me a little to go on to property manager websites and there is very little there for an owner. So if an owner landed on this website and thought, oh, I like this, how do I get more information? And it, there might be something minimal and a contact form. How much information should be on there? Well, I'd first off, just I would like to start off by saying is everybody should calculate the value of a new property. 
that comes into your rental program. Think about what you make in that property per year. Think about what you, you will, you know, uh, how long you're going to keep that property in your rental program and figure out what the value of that property is. So, I mean, it may be 30, 40, $50,000 is the value of one property. So mm -hmm. I think if you start there, you're like, huh, what can we do to attract more owners to our, you know, so we always recommend on the landing, on the, you know, the home page in the upper right hand corner, having a contrasting color call out, call to action, like enroll your home or list your home, you know, to really get their attention. And that's going to take you to a landing page. And again, we'll, we'll, we'll share with you, Heather, a, uh, we have a landing page infographic on a proper strategy of building a landing page. And going through all the steps there but the you know the key is you want to at least make sure you have a form on it so you're capturing that information don't make it too long uh, studies have shown time and time again the longer the form is the lower your response rate is but you want to get just enough information that you can you know make a reasonable determination at least reach out to that uh, prospective homeowner but yeah 100 percent i would get a get a link on the home page and then i would have a very specific page directly to that but again it goes back to that messaging you know, what are, what is your value proposition what are your USPs? What are your key features and benefits? And then insert that, uh, insert that form on that page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we, we use, we, we've got some uh, lead generation downloads mm -hmm. that we send on a, on a, a drip over time, you know, for the, for the first inquiry, they get one and then a, then a week later they'll get something else. And then when they go with, if they're not that warm, we'll still continue to send as long as, Canadian law allows us to, <laughs> but just to, so, so we, we have, you know, the, the, the 10 best things you can do to successfully rent your property, how to be prep pet friendly, just all these different types of information that we feel is going to help out an owner. You know, even if they don't come to us, then maybe they'll come back in, in the future. Is that something you'd recommend? Absolutely. Just to make sure I'm not yeah. doing this One, <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> 100%. No, absolutely. You want to set up those sequences and you know, HubSpot does that. I know Active Campaign obviously does that. So, yeah, no, one hundred percent. You want to make sure you're you're you know giving them information. Uh, again, educate. You know, help don't sell, as, as uh, Matt Landau says. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so I I don't know what number we got to. <laughs> so we're up uh, to powerful sales tools. Is is uh, next? So you know, what what are some assets uh, and materials that you can create? to help once you do have that lead that's coming in that will help you uh, close them. Um, so we, uh, you know, for our partners, we build out, you know, a whole template library of pro formas that they can use. Anything from purchase pro formas, where they're show, comparing side by side comparisons on different houses, uh, shows the ROI on each one. You know, sometimes other the more expensive home is actually a better investment, right? It's a better return uh, in the end. So having that mm -hmm. side by side pro forma is really nice. Or sometimes it's an existing homeowner uh, with an existing house where you don't necessarily need to get into all the expenses of it. Uh, you can just show kind of the financial uh, performance of, uh, of that home. And then just some marketing material uh, to help convert those, uh, those prospective owners to come in. And then up next would be number eight is coaching for sales success. So it's, you know, it's, you know, even Michael Jordan had a coach, right? It's like you always need to be getting better and better and better. And one of the reasons we use that call tracking service is every call gets recorded. Uh, we actually go back and uh, we'll do coaching with them. And we have a proven uh, template and a proven format. We give, we provide uh, objections and rebuttals, cheat sheets, um, and just follow that proven format uh, so they can be more effective uh, in their closing. So really coaching and, and consulting with them to, to get better. Um, it's the, you know, sharpening the saw mentality. And then the last is, you know, what I call the feedback. And that's the, you know, set it and forget it is not a proper strategy, right? You yep. constantly have to be evolving. You have to be tracking your results. You have to learn from those results. You have to get better and better and better uh, or else, you know, it'll continue to go down. Um, so we're, we're big believers in the, uh, the feedback loop. And that is, I hope it wasn't too long. That's our nine step uh, process. I got to 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, well I'll, I'll, I'll sort of try and tease these out in the show notes so it, it comes back to nine I'll send so that's, it over but that's yeah you know, I mean that's fantastic Brooke that's uh, that's hugely over delivered on <laughs> on this this content for people so any other tips for growing inventory in, in such a competitive market because now I'm, I'm hearing this from some owners in our region now which is I mean we used to say well Airbnb will never come to cottage country well of course it did <laughs> 
And um, the, the constant objection we get is, what can you do for me that I can't do myself with Airbnb? I'd love to get your take on, on the answer to that one. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> well, I, I guess it also it goes back to the personas, right, and figuring out their, their pain points um, and understanding, you know, what, what is it? You know, look, some people I feel like enjoy that process, you know, of doing it. Um, but just really highlighting what you do differently, right? Showing that you, you know, look, this is a full-time job for us. And it's, you know, most people don't, the majority of people do not list on Airbnb because they actually truly enjoy it. They do it out of a necessity a lot of times because they feel like they haven't probably found that right opportunity mm-hmm. yet. Um, so sometimes it's best, uh, I, I would say it's sometimes better to have that that owner that actually started on Airbnb and they saw the pitfalls, they saw the calls in the middle of the night and, and everything. I mean, I, I'm a perfect example. I have a, a property and, uh, I, you know, look, I've been in this industry for about 12 years. So I think I'm pretty good at what I do. And, but I, uh, I, I was in last June, I was actually in Montreblanc doing a triathlon the day before my race. I've been training for this race, Heather, for a year. And the day before my race, of course, oh. at like six or seven o'clock at night, I get a call from my, my guest saying, hey, your garage door is all locked up. We can't open it. And we're trying to leave. <laughs> and, they, and they checked out the next day. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be on the bike and you know running and swimming tomorrow for about eight hours. So I don't think I would be able to handle this. And uh, so I handed the phone over to my, my poor, you know, incredible wife and uh, let her handle it. And, um, you know, but he, he would have been a perfect example where, yeah. I would have loved to have a professional property manager, you know, helping me out. Yes, we 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 tell the story of of the guests who called at eleven o'clock at night um, because they were trying to make popcorn to watch a movie and they couldn't get the microwave to work. <laughs> and to them, that was that was an the emergency. most important thing. That was an emergency, and you know, we were able to handle that. We were able to find the the um, the manual for that particular microwave online send them send it over to them and problem solved so that that's one well i think it's always good to use that sort of example isn't it i was just going to say i think having a couple stories uh like that is a great way as soon as anyone talks about yeah i'll just do it myself well let me tell you a couple stories we'll just think about that first you know but like you said you know maybe they'll come back later if they don't if they choose not to come with you um and just continue to provide content and uh good educational content information for them uh, and you will have them uh, coming back in a no time, I'm sure. Do you also um, cover retention? Teach your clients how to retain their owners once they've got. So that's funny you, you should mention that. So uh, that is definitely in the works. We are going to add a retention package uh, to our services. Uh, you know, we do some you know small recommendations and, and you know some uh, tips and tricks and things like that right now, but nothing formal. Uh, but it definitely is important because look. Uh, a save is a win, right? A save, mm-hmm. uh, saving that property is just as important, if not more important than uh, getting a new one. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's really critical. And if you look at what that does to the lifetime value of your, you know, you can reduce that churn by five, 10, 20%, you know, what that actually, the financial impact that it makes to your business uh, over the lifetime of it is, is pretty impressive. And especially if you start thinking if, you know, some of you know, some, some vacation managers may want to, you know, consider exiting uh, their business some point, Obviously, there's a value of every single contract in your rental program, and they're, they're going to be evaluating that as well. Okay, just very briefly before we, before we wrap this up, just want to talk about contracts, to actually, you know, the contract that you actually have with an owner. Is there anything that you would say that you absolutely must have in that contract that is going to save you? I mean, I know I've, I've got one, one, one piece that we put in our contract, which is about selling the property. Well, that's a good one, right? Uh, that obviously you're kind of taking the words out of my mouth. I think, I, you know, honoring any existing reservations is yeah. one I would definitely uh, make sure you put in there. But I'm actually, I'm a believer in, you know, if somebody wants to leave, giving them, not locking them into a long term contract. Because the last thing you want is an irate owner, you know, stuck in your program. You want to get rid of them. Yeah. Well, I would put the clause in there. You can exit at any time or give a 30 day notice. But all we ask is you, uh, you know, honor any existing reservations. And that's actually a great, what we talked about before in the messaging, that's a great risk reversal, right? Mm-hmm. But now when you're trying to get people to sign up, you're, you're eliminating those uh, pain points or eliminating those objections potentially. And you're going to convert more people by having that as a, a risk reversal. 
Yeah, I, I like that. We we definitely have that. You know, as, as as you say, if if the relationship is what it's all about between you, the property manager, and the owner. So if that relationship is breaking down, there's no you, whoever wants to hang on to somebody when you don't want them around and they don't want you around. I mean, I you'd agree. probably try and work it through, but uh, but we, you know, I think as like every other property manager goes through this at some point where you, you did, there's a clash of personality or something doesn't quite work out and, and you need to part company and you don't need to be waving a contract and saying, you can't do this. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. Yeah. Hey Brooke, you really, as I say, you've really over delivered. Tell us a little bit more about if somebody's interested in, in getting in touch with you, how do they go about it? Yeah, so the easiest way is probably just coming straight to our website, which is just Vintory.com, V-I-N-T-O-R-Y.com. And uh, I'm sure we have a, a lead form on there. You can just fill it out and uh, we, will, we will be in touch with you uh, very, very quickly. That's fantastic. I'd just like to thank you so much for, sure. for coming on board. I know you're, you're heading out soon to uh, all sorts of conferences this year. So um, if anybody's going to just a range of conferences, I'm sure you're going to be around and about. Vera, Vera, both Vera Mintel's uh, I'll be presenting at uh, here uh, actually on Thursday down in uh, Sandestin and then in Gatlinburg. And I uh, hope to be presenting at uh, Vera May Charlotte uh, out in April. Wonderful. Well, I, I certainly enjoyed um, watching you speak and, um, and we'll hopefully catch up with you at some point in the future. So thank you. Well, Heather, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Well, that was great, Brooke. Thank you so much for sharing so much. There's, there was just such a wealth of information in there. So to make sure that you don't forget everything that you've heard, we've got a slew of links and things to download on the show notes. So head on over to vacationrentalformula.com and you can download uh, a number of really helpful templates that Brooke has provided. So if you are a property management company and you are looking for some help with your owner acquisition, then I strongly suggest you get in touch with Brooke and his team and I'm sure they will help you out no end. So for those of you managers who are thinking of joining us on the short-term rental manager PM Pro program, which is our training program upcoming for property managers who are interested in starting in the business or want to do a reset or are just sort of around about the naught to, you know, naught to 20 to 30 properties. And you want to make sure that you're really, really doing it right. And that your, your trajectory is is the correct one and that you're heading off in the right right direction, then please let us know. You can, um, I'll, I'll put a link on the show notes to the course profile. Go take a look. Brooke will be joining us on the owner acquisition week, on the owner acquisition module of the course to do a, uh, a webinar session and also a live coaching session for anybody who is interested in learning more about owner acquisition. I mean, this is priceless. You actually get to speak to Brooke personally, ask your questions, and, and that is just part of the course. You'll also find with the course profile that it tells you all the other people that are joining us for the different modules and who are going to be offering up their knowledge and experience for you to share. So each week of the program, as we go into a different module, we will have a subject matter expert who will come along and share their expertise. So it's a bit like going to a conference and seeing the presentations and then having your sort of almost one-on-one -on -one question and answer session with that person afterwards, but you don't have to stand in line for it. It's going to be there for you. And uh, I think this, this is unique in terms of training in this business. I am so excited about sharing this with you. So, you know, if, if you're interested, go to the show notes, click on the link that's there and it will take you to the uh, the course profile, uh, which will tell you all about it. Okay. That's it for this week. And as ever, if you could 
leave me a review on iTunes. I'd be mega, mega grateful. It really helps to boost the profile of the Vacation Rental Success podcast and helps other people because they're able to more easily find it. So once again, thank you. It's been a pleasure as ever being with you. If there's anything you'd like to comment on, then join the conversation on the show notes for the episode at vacationrentalformula.com. We'd love to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again next week.